Howdy doody everybody. Yesterday, somebody asked me if I knew how to make two different images reveal in the same space according to the user's mouse position. Now I had never engineered such a control like that before, but I do enjoy a good quick challenge. First let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's the finished effect that you'll be learning to create in this video. And what happens is when a user comes to your page and puts their mouse anywhere on any of these types of images, it lets them control the dividing line between the two images, the pair of images that you have. And this would be cool if you had before and after photos. Like this is me before I turned into a pirate. And this is me after I turned into a pirate. And this is just a negative. So this is the, uh, the school bus in its normal state. And this is a negative that I created for it. And the user can come to my page and control these in this sort of way. Okay, we're going to start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. And you can name it whatever you want. And then just make sure you have some images ready. Now the first thing we'll do is structure out the HTML. We're going to first put a div in place. We'll go down a couple of lines, make sure we close that div. Now inside of that div, we're going to put an image tag. And we'll give it source attribute equal to the path that you want for your first image. And mine is conveniently named 1.jpg. All right, so now take that and just make a copy and put your second picture that is part of that same pair. Now the second one, we're going to give a class. That way we can affect it with CSS. So this one gets a class of image two. Now this div, we're also going to give this a class of reveal. So this div is the main container for your little reveal effect. And then you just slap two images the pair of images that you want inside of it. It's pretty straightforward. Now the reason why we're giving them classes and not IDs is so that you could take this and put this on the page as many times as you want with different images inside. And finally in the HTML the very last thing we're going to need is a div that lays right on top of both images but we're going to make it transparent. So in your reveal container you now have three elements and each element stacks on top of the first because in the CSS we're going to make them all absolute position. So since we're going to position them absolutely they're all going to stack neatly all right on top of each other. If you look at it right now they won't be stacked neatly on top of each other but when we apply the CSS they will be. Now this div I'm going to give it a class equal to activator because this div is going to serve as the activator. It's really going to be what controls everything. And we do that by giving it the on mouse move event. And we make that equal to the JavaScript function that we want to fire off anytime the mouse moves. And that function is going to be named reveal. And we also want to pass the event as an argument. So you pass the event as an argument through the function that way when the function runs you can use this dynamically for any amount of reveal elements that you have on a page. So say you put this reveal class container on the page 10 times with 10 different pairs of images. This uh, reveal function is going to work dynamically for all of them. And that's why we pass the event. That way we can target the actual uh, reveal container that the user has their mouse over. And that's it for the HTML. And I'm going to be adding another one right. Actually, I'll add it right now. Let me just grab that, copy it, and I'll show you how easy it is to put more on the page. I'll just change this to the image source to three and four. And that's all I have to change. HTML is all done. Now I'm going to go up here into my head element and inside of the style element, I'm going to apply some CSS that's going to affect all of these elements here. Okay. And I'll explain all of it right now. So first we're targeting the reveal class elements and that is these divs that are the containers. Now I just made them the size that my images are. All of my images are 280 and you can play with these numbers to be whatever you need them to be. Then I just gave the container a black border solid and I floated those left. That way they can stack on the page horizontally. Float left just lets a div behave like it's an inline element, like an image would behave. 
and then I gave them a margin of 24 pixels so they're not crowded on top of each other. Then this rule is for targeting the images, any image that's inside of the reveal container. So down here we see we have the reveal container and we have two images inside of it. So this rule, this position absolute is applied to all the images. That's what makes them stack. Then in this next rule, we're only going to target the image to class, which is these elements here that have the class of image to. Now what we're doing to those is you're applying the clip property in CSS and the clip property allows you to clip out a portion of the element that you're targeting. So we're targeting an image and we're clipping it to this rectangle. And I'll actually put a little comment in here for you guys that says top, right, bottom, left. So my top clip value, I have zero pixels. Then my right clip, I have 140 pixels. That's what makes it right down the center to start out with. If you wanted to start all the way at the left to show the whole first image, you just put this on zero. But I put it on 140, that way they're divided down the center. And then for the bottom value, I just put the height of the images. And then for the left value, we put zero as well. Then finally, we have the activator properties. So this is the properties that are applied to this div here that we're using for the activator. And we give that position absolute so it stacks right on top of the two images. We make its opacity zero so we can see right through it. I made its background black, but you don't have to have a background color there. I just put that in place while I was experimenting. We give it the same width and height as our images. And then we make the cursor the E resize. And that gives you the little double arrow that goes left and right. When the user's mouse goes over the element, they'll see a little double arrow that lets them know that they can move things left and right. Okay. So if we look at this now in a Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, whatever, you'll see that we have the starting point for the effect, but there's no control yet. I can't control that yet because... We have no JavaScript in place to control it. And basically what we want to do is move that clip value, this uh, this right clip value, we're going to change that value in JavaScript according to where you, the user's mouse is. So let's go down to our script element where we put our JavaScript in place for our application. And you see how our divs activator, they have a on mouse move event and the reveal function fires off. So we have to have that reveal function in our JavaScript. And here's function reveal. Now the first thing I'm doing is scooping up the event as an argument. That way I can target the element that's calling the function to run more dynamically. That way we can have many, many of them on the page, but not really have to have a whole lot of code. So the first thing that we do, actually there's only one line that powers the whole thing. Let me show you it working first, and then I'll explain that line. So when I put my mouse over any of the images, we get the control that we wanted. You see? And it doesn't matter where those images are on the page. Okay, so when you're working with the event in this sort of way, where you pass the event as an argument through the function, you can target the element that's making the function run. So since this when the user's mouse goes over this activator, we can dynamically get to the images that are its sibling. Now down here we have another activator div, and this one will also give our script some insight to who its siblings are. So all we have to do is target the previous element sibling. So that's what I did. I used event.target, which gives you access to the actual element calling the function to run, which is this div right here. And you say previous element sibling. So what happens if you target the previous element sibling for this element? That means you're going to target this element. So all you're doing here with this code that's highlighted in blue right now is you're targeting this image, which is has a class of image two. So event.target.previous element sibling lets you target this element dynamically or this element dynamically depending on which set of images the user is controlling at that time. So we've said event.target.previousElement sibling. Then we just affect its style, that image's style property of clip. And we just make that equal to a new rectangle. 
You see how we're making the rectangle clip here? That's a static clipping. This is a dynamic rectangle because the right, you see the right value up here? All I did was make this right value dynamic. So the pixels are always going to be a dynamic number according to where the mouse is. And the way I got the mouse position was saying event.clientx. That tells you where on the page the mouse is. And then we subtract the event.target.offsetLeft. So wherever the elements are on the page, you subtract that number, it's offset left. So you subtract that from wherever the user's mouse is on the page. And that gives you the new clipping that you need. We're just simply clipping in CSS, but we're doing it dynamically according to where the user's mouse is. And that's the basics of it all. Let's check it out one more time. And you can see that the clipping region is changing according to where my mouse is going over the image. So we're just changing the CSS clip rectangle. Now before I go, I want to pass along some tips that might be handy for some of you guys. Now in the CSS, you simply adjust the numbers to correspond with your preferred image size. Now if you find that the functionality does not work on tablets or phones or anything that's a touch screen, you can apply touch events to enable it to work. Touch events can be put into place using JavaScript very easily. So all you would do is add the type of touch event that you want to control the dual image reveal functionality. And that will make it work on almost any type of touch screen. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, click on the subscribe button to tune into Adam's channel. He produces new videos on a regular basis. Below the subscribe button are a few more of his video tutorials that other viewers have found to be helpful or inspiring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.